We've seen a variety of relations, including functions and, and relationships that aren't necessarily functions. And we've also seen relations that, that pair elements of, of one set with, with elements of that same set. And that's what we call a relation on A. A relation on A is a relation of elements of A to other elements of A. So usually we write it like this. The relation takes elements of A and maps them to other elements of A. So that just means that, that if I had uh, a set of, we'll just say, three elements, that basically the all of the ordered pairs in this relation uh, would be elements of sets with A. So maybe one gets paired with two, and maybe maybe one gets paired with three, uh, and maybe maybe even two gets paired with one. Okay, so that's a relation on A right there, or an example of a relation on A. Not, not every relation with, with on this set will look that way. It depends on what the rule is for relating elements. Uh, we can use actually a visual technique to show how elements are related to one another and, and to furthermore study properties that certain relations have. Now, uh, uh, being a function requires a, a couple of properties to hold with respect to the relation. Okay, so this is no different. We're just going to look at three different properties here other than those of. Uh, properties required of a relation to be a function. And we're going to focus on visualizing these relationships. So we can actually use what are called nodes and edges. So uh, you might just think of them as dots and arrows to indicate a relationship between elements of a set. Uh, we'll study this for more formally in a topic called graph theory, uh, but we'll just kind of introduce the visualization now because I think it's extremely helpful. So let's say A is the set of elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and here's the relation it relates we don't know what the rule is behind why these elements are related or paired together, but this is the, the relation. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off by, by drawing my, my, my five elements to, uh, say that's three, four, and then we'll have, I'll put five over here. And we see that one is related to two. Okay, so these are the nodes, these are the dots, and one is related to two. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing from one to two. Uh, three is related to one, so I'll draw an arrow from three to one. Two is related to four, so I'll draw an arrow from two to four. And four is also related to two. So that means that there should be an arrow pointing from four to two. So it's kind of like a double-sided uh, double sided arrow. Okay, and so that's how I would indicate this. Now, five is not related to any of the elements. It's not paired with any of them. So five is just sort of the standalone element. Okay, this is going to help us because if a relation, and not all relations have this property, a relation has what we call the reflexive property. It has this characteristic called reflexivity. If for every element in A, that element is paired with itself. So in other words, every element in A gets paired with itself in, in the relation. Okay, so what would that look like? Well, if, if I had an element that was paired with itself, like let's say using the same set A above here, but I'll create a new relation. Let's say that we had 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. Now there could be other elements in this in this relation. But for now, I just want to point out that if we have one, two, three, four, and five related to themselves, I'll, that means I'm going to draw an arrow from one to one. So you'll see these little loops. And what I'm trying to get across here is that if your relation has the reflexive property, then visually you should see that every point loops back to itself. If, if you were missing one of these, if for example, 5-5 five, five did not loop back to itself, there was no 5-5 five, five in here, for instance, uh, this loop wasn't there, then we would not have the reflexive property. It has to be true that for every, every element in A, the element is paired with itself in the relation. Okay, that's the reflexive property visualized. Now we have something called the symmetric property, um, we have symmetry. Now, symmetry kind of means that if you, if you think about a, like a piece of paper is symmetric because if you fold it, if you crease it down that uh, halfway point, you fold it 
onto itself, you'll, you'll get perfectly matching uh, halves. Or if you take the shape of a circle and you fold the circle in half onto itself, uh, you, you have symmetry. This circle is symmetric. Now in this context, if you have a pair of elements that are different, x and y, um, then it, you should also have the ordered pair with the elements reversed in that relation. Okay, so if you have an ordered pair, you should also have the reverse of that ordered pair in there. So if you find, and this is an if statement, meaning that if you don't have, let's say, 3 comma 4 in there, then you're not going to necessarily need 4 comma 3. Uh, but if you do have an ordered pair in there with different elements, then you should have the, the flip-flop of those elements as well. So let me give you an example of how that would look if you have the symmetric property. So let's say, um, let's say we had our elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And let's say I'm going to define this relation as follows. Again, there could be more pairs in there, but let's say I have 1, 3, and, and uh, then I'll have 2, 5, and uh, 4, or 1, okay? And now let's also say that we have the reverse of all of those, 3, 1, 5, 2, and 1, 4. So remember, this property, and there could have other ones in here as well, uh, but as long as every element, so 1 gets paired with 3, we should also see 3 getting paired with 1. So in other words, between any two pairs that are connected with, with a, uh, an arrow, that arrow should be bidirectional. Okay, every single arrow like that. Now, from, we have an arrow from 2 to 5, and we have an arrow from 5 to 2. So that's a double-sided arrow. And then from 4 to 1, and we also have from 1 to 4. Now, notice that this is an if statement. So if you're like, well, what about 1, 2? Well, neither 1, 2 nor 2, 1 is in this relation as far as we can see. Um, therefore, if 1, 2 is not in there, then we don't require 2, 1 to be in there. If, if 2, 1 was in our, our relation over here, then we would expect to see 1, 2 in that relation as well. Now, if I added a pair, like, like let's say, let's say I added a 1, 1, 2, like that, and let's say I didn't have 2, 1, if I was missing 2, 1, if I didn't have that in there, then this would have, this would have no uh, or not, no symmetric property, or no symmetry, I'll say, a little bit uh, more kindly worded. So that's, again, only if you have an ordered pair, then you should have the reverse of the elements, another ordered pair with the elements reversed. That's symmetry. Okay, now, finally, we have uh, another property, and you've, you've probably seen this before, it's called the transitive property. You may not have called it this before, but uh, you might have seen this. If A equals B and B equals C, then what's true? Well, if A is B and B is C, then that must mean that A is C as well. So this is where you've seen this context before, this transitive property. Now it's a little bit more generic uh, because these don't have to be numbers. These, these could be uh, names, these could be uh, shapes, they could be anything that we're relating together. A relation has a transitive property if for any pair, any two pairs, x, y, and y, z, you also have x, z. So what I want to point out in translation is if you find the pairs x, y, and y, z, notice that these are the same element. So if the second component in the first pair is the same as the first component in the second pair, then you should have a third pair that relates the, the first and, and the last. So you should also have this relation here that we're seeing, x, z. So let me give you an example of that. And I'll just, I'll just keep this simple. Let's say we have 1, 2, and then we have 2, 3. Now we're not saying these are equal. We're just saying they are related, right? This was this particular example was a relation where we had equality, but a relation just is a rule for describing relationships. So one is related to two, 
So there's an arrow from one to two. And there's also an arrow from two to three. Therefore, if you see a situation where you have an arrow coming in to one node, notice that two has an arrow coming in and an arrow going out, then you should also see an arrow that takes you directly from the first node to the third node. And therefore, you would see one, you, you should see one, three. Now, if you had, let's say, just one, two, let's just say that was your entire relation. Well, in order to have the transitive property, it just says that if you have two pairs where the first pair, its second element is the same as the second pair's first element, then you should also have a pairing of the first element of the first pair and the second element of the second pair. But that's if only if this condition is met. If this condition isn't met, then you don't require to have that x, z in there. So this is just a visualization of what we should see with reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Reflexive property, every element of A should loop back to itself. Okay. If you have the symmetric property, anytime an, an element points to another element, that other element should point back. Transitive property, if an element points to another element which points to another element, then the first element should point to the third element. Uh, this is for all such situations in your relation. Now it's possible that one or more of these fails. It's also possible that a relation has all three of these properties. Um, we'll take a look more in analyzing these and determining what properties relations have in, in uh, future videos.